So church, growing up, um, I didn't speak Spanish. Um, and so having a dear friend of the family named Jesus was kind of lost on me. Okay. Until one day I saw his name written. And I think it was around Christmas time. It may have been on a card or a present. I saw the name J-E-S-U-S. And it blew my mind. I remember asking him, is your name Jesus? <laughs> so we didn't go to church a whole lot. And of course, I'm nine years old. I don't know a whole lot about Jesus. All I do know is, you know, he's the one that's on the buildings. It's his birthday. You're not going to get in trouble for stealing Jesus' name? Does your mom even know who Jesus is? And you think I'm kidding, but it was a simple mind. And it just, it, it just blew me away, y'all, that I had a friend named Jesus. Right? A few years later, they told me about Chewy. And I was like, oh, I love his restaurant, y'all. Golly. So this is around the time a lot of us actually get confused with what do we call Jesus? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But now Emmanuel, what is Emmanuel? God is with us. And so it's important to be able to understand that for Jesus, Emmanuel is less a name and more a title. It's less who he is and more what he is. Right? I, have a, I have a cousin. I have a cousin. His name is Emmanuel. There are plenty of people in history named Emmanuel. My cousin, he's a great guy, but he's not God with us. And so when we look at what Matthew is telling us in his story, not just here in chapter one, but as we keep reading all throughout the, the rest of the story, what we see Matthew doing is telling us that when we see Jesus, we are seeing God with us. It's not his name. It's what he is. So when you see Jesus healing, what are you seeing? God with us. When you see Jesus reaching out to lepers and reaching out to people who have been forgotten, what do you see? God with us. When you see Jesus, see him uh, going against the religious leaders and telling them what's most important, what do you see? When you see Jesus on the cross, what do you see? God with us. So what Matthew was trying to get us to see is everything that we will read about and see and learn about Jesus tells us that Jesus is God with us. All right, friends, so that's the head part of this, right? That's the part that we get. Okay, yeah, okay, we, we understand Jesus. Emmanuel is a Hebrew name, and it translates into God with us, and it's part of the story. Matthew's telling us Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. We, we have our kids come up, and they'll do, you know, a little program sometimes, and they recite the story. That's the head part of it. That's an important part of it. But I also want us to talk about the heart part of it. The part where we put our heart into the story. And you may wonder, well, this is a story about Jesus. How do I fit into that story about a virgin birth and some guy who's about to divorce his wife? What I need you to do then is to pay attention to the experience of Joseph. To pay attention to what's happening in these short verses and what, what could be happening as we, as we hear him having this dream with the angel. First of all, you know there's fear, and you know there's fear because what's the first thing the angel tells Joseph? Like, fear not. Don't be afraid to take on Mary, right? So that tells you right off the bat, well, there's fear. He's having fear about what's happening. Well, what is he fearful of? Well, there's also probably a sense of, uh, of rejection because What's happened to him, literally, in his mind is, his wife has cheated on him. That's different how we do it today. We had a wedding here yesterday. When that couple went out that door after I did what I did, they were a married couple. For Mary and Joseph, they made the uh, arrangement amongst their families. They, were be, uh, they would say that they are married. They wouldn't live together yet. That would come later. But they are married. They are husband and wife. Joseph finds out, 
Mary's pregnant. I mean, what are you going to think? You ever seen one of these shows on TV, any of these novellas, somebody gets pregnant when they're not supposed to? Does anybody say it was probably the Holy Spirit? (laughs) They better not. So there's rejection that he's dealing with. And part of that rejection, you can imagine, maybe there's some shame involved. Why would she do this to me? Now he's angry. Why would she do this to me? And then, of course, you know how it is. Joseph knows this about her. You think everybody else knows this about her, too? Oh, everybody knows she's pregnant. Everybody knows they're not living together yet. They're not supposed to be doing that yet. So you know how people are. So now he's got to deal with all that as well. He may even be dealing with a sense of loss. Like He had in his mind that he was going to start his family, build his home. And now it's gone. It's gone because, well, my wife cheated on me. Everything that I had wanted to do is now messed up. Every hope I had about what my life would be like and and what I was ready to do, it's, it's all in chaos. And we also know that he's uncertain at some point about what he should do next. The law says, very literally, kill her. Merry Christmas, right? He doesn't want to do that. He's well within reason, apparently. He's well within his right. But he doesn't want to do that. And so you can even hear it as Matthew tells the story. It's kind of like he's wrestling with himself. He's uncertain. Like, what in the world should I do? Should I do what uh, everybody says I can do? Should I try to figure out something else? So he's had this wrestling match with, with his, with him, within his mind, and he's trying to figure out what is the right thing to do for himself. In the middle of that, he has this dream where the angel appears and tells him what's going on. Let me ask you a question. A couple questions, maybe. Have you ever been uh, fearful of anything? Have you ever been angry? Have you ever been so angry it's embarrassing? If you said yes, we should talk afterwards. That sounds like some good sermon illustrations there. Have you ever been worried that you might be rejected? Have you ever gone through the pain of being rejected? Have you ever had a loss, deep loss? Have you ever been confused about what your next step is? See, if you can say yes to any of those questions, you fit perfectly into the story of Christmas. Because pay attention to this. For us, you know, we've got the lights and we've got the tree and we've got, you know, silent night on Saturday night when we're going to do the candlelight. And it's this great big thing and it's wonderful. But if you pay attention to how Matthew tells the story, there's none of that there. There's there's none of the sort of pageantry of it. It's this is how Jesus was born. Then he was born next. And so what is there is Joseph and Mary, who are trying to make sense, are going to have to make sense of what this means for them and how they are going to be a part of this promise that God has given to them. And I think, I think when we take all this away, I think when we can finally silence those speakers from hearing all the interference and the music coming over it, when we can finally strip everything down to what really matters, like we have the same choices they did. What are we going to do with the promise? What are we going to do with the reality of God with us? Now, you may not have an angel appear in your dream. You may not have some big supernatural event where it's like, oh my gosh, God spoke to me. But we believe God still spoke. And so part of what we're learning to do is how to hear the voice of God. That's why we hear scripture together. That's why we pray together. And that's why we keep praying together. And so those feelings of fear and uh, rejection, hurt and loss, those are all feelings we, we have at some point, somewhere along in our life. It's the same feelings the prophet Isaiah would speak to. 
In Isaiah's day, there's a king, and he's worried about other kings who have joined together, and they want to invade his kingdom. And that sounds just what it sounds like, right? It's all political, right? It's always kings and kingdoms, right? And so one king is worried about an alliance being made against him. He's worried about what the repercussions will be. He's worried about what would happen to his kingdom, what will happen to himself even, right? And we all know if the king is worried, well, his people are worried too. And so you have this, we can sense this great uh, fear and insecurity about what's going to happen next and how we're going to be cared for. And how do we know that everything is going to be what it needs to be? And that's where that text from Isaiah jumps in. The prophet tells the king, God says, you just ask for a sign. Ask for a sign. Ask for a sign. It could be be a a deep a sign that goes all the way down to Sheol, to the pit. If it goes that deep, I'll give you a sign that deep. Or or if if it's a sign that goes all the way up to heaven, far as heaven is. If it's a sign that big, I'll give it to you, God tells the king. Do you remember what the king said at first? Do you remember when we we just read it? You just heard it about eight and a half minutes ago. Do you remember what the king said? Ah, I'm good. We don't need to hear it. I don't want to bother God. And you can almost hear God say, these people. And so God says, all right, I'm going to give you a sign anyway. And what was the sign God told the prophet to tell the king to look for? We can't hear you. Say it loud. Yes. You pay attention for that new son. And when you see him and when you hear his name, You remember, God is with us. I told you I have a cousin, right? His name is Emmanuel. Great guy, but he's not God with us. Can you guess what I think of, though, every time I say his name? God is with us. And so God tells the king, I'm going to give you a promise anyway. You're going to see this baby and you're going to realize with everything going on around you, with everything that maybe you have every right to be fearful about, maybe your fears are well placed. You you got you got two kingdoms at least trying to come against you. You should be worried. But when you see the sign that I give you, you remember what I'm telling you. God is with us. And I feel like sometimes that's kind of who we are. God says, you ask for the promise. I'll give it to you. No, I'm all right, God. God says, I ask for the promise. I'll give it to you. I'm all right, God. No, you're not all right. Because I hear what you're praying for. I see past the smiles that you give everybody else. I see the actual hurt and confusion that you carry. I I know the burden that you don't want to tell anybody else about. You do need a sign. Thanks be to God. God gives us one. And it's that sign that stays there. It's that sign that we bring up to ourselves over and over again. And it's not some... It's not some uh, fortune cookie sign. We need to be careful because I think sometimes when we approach Scripture, when we approach the words of the Bible, when we approach what it means to be in communion with God, we sort of take it as kind of fortune cookie. You ever get a fortune cookie? Do you know a person in your life that doesn't read a fortune cookie? You hand somebody a fortune cookie and what are they going to do? They're going to crack it. They may or may not eat it. They may only eat half of it, right? But they're going to take out that little piece of paper. They're not playing the lottery, so they're going to skip that part. And they're going to read what that word of wisdom is. A lot of you know my dad's a preacher as well, and he would tell me sometimes early on when he was just like, I don't know what to tell the people. He'd go to the Chinese buffet. He'd get a fortune cookie and be like, thank you, God. 
But I think sometimes we approach Scripture, we approach our faith kind of in the same way. God, just give me like a little thing. God, God says, you ask for the promise that goes as deep as the pit and as high as heaven. And you know what? When we see Jesus, we are seeing the deep promise of God. So what's our Advent action? Again, we, we know Emmanuel, God is with us. We know Emmanuel, okay, it's the title of Jesus. and Well, the name Jesus, right, that, that means God saves. It comes from Hebrew as well. Um, Yeshua, some of you know that. Joshua, so Joshua is kind of, it's an it's a ancient form of the name Jesus. So we know all this head stuff about it. But I think our Advent action is now to put our heart into the story. That's what Joseph is asked to do. That's what Joseph, as he's listening to and seeing the angel, the angel says, it's okay. Don't be afraid to take her as your wife. Let me tell you what's happened. Let me tell you why. But then if you notice, he also says, now this is what you're going to do. You name him Jesus. You be a part of what's happening. You put your heart into what God, this new thing that God is doing right now. And church, I think that's the same invitation for us as well. With everything we know about Jesus, when are we ever actually going to put our heart into it. Because that's what matters most. What matters most is not just that we know the promise, but that we know the promise is ours. Enough to trust it and to live like it's true. So did I tell you, I have a cousin, his name is Emmanuel. He's a good guy, but he is not God with us. But every time I say his name, guess what I think of? God is with us. Every time I think of God is with us, I think of Jesus. I still have a friend named Jesus. <laughs> But what we are here to celebrate is that we have a Savior named Jesus that is God with us. God gave us the promise that went as far as the pit and as high as heaven to show us just how much we're loved. How much of our heart, of your heart, are you going to put into the story now? Let's pray. Oh, God of mercy and love, we, we thank you for this gift, the promise that you gave Joseph, the assurance you gave him. We're grateful, God, because we know that the promise that was his is ours to have as well. And so as your church, as your people, Lord, help us to Get out from behind the fears we have. To step away from the fakeness that we present. To not be ashamed of what hasn't worked out the way we wanted it to. To not be fearful. To trust you. But to give you our heart fully, Lord so that we can know the true peace that comes with Emmanuel. Thank you, Lord, for always being with us. And since you are with us, we pray and we trust in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen? Amen. Yeah, amen. Thanks be to God.